So the Premier League starts this weekend and um, I spend a fair bit of time off season uh, looking at the start of the next season and there are opportunities to trade in there as well and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Please like or dislike the video or leave a comment below. That will allow me to produce better videos and more of them in the future. So the football season is upon us now and during the off season I'm always busy. So what I don't do during the off season is forget about it altogether. All of the data and information that I've gathered from the previous season goes into the melting pot and I try and form some opinion and some ideas of what I want to do next season. But the interesting thing about the football season during the off-season is there is still activity in the market and this is geared around managerial change, player change and so on and so forth. So as teams uh, come in and out of uh, big transfers or they lose managers or key players then the price starts to move and adjust to that in their relative markets. So if you look at the Premier League market this year we've seen the price on Hull for relegation shorten as they lost Steve Bruce and you know they seem to be in a little bit of turmoil there but in fact the price on Middlesbrough went in the other direction. Now as a Southampton fan I'm used to this because we sell all of our players every year <laughs> and get rid of our manager so I've made um, good sums of money by backing Southampton for the relegation market and, uh, and participating in those sort of things during the off-season. Although I have to admit this year uh, the market's been very quiet and in fact you know, we sold a couple of uh, strikers and that looked like that could impact things. But the rest of the team is still pretty strong. I have no idea how the new manager is going to play out. Um, but having watched them in the pre-season friendlies, they seem pretty well settled as a side. So it's been less impact on that market um, this particular year. Now, what I also do at this time of year is um, I have a good look at all of the stats from prior years and start to plot out paths in terms of how I think things are going to go. But I regularly, if you, if you haven't seen it before, I will move over here and the video will appear in this corner. I have a good video on how wage bill affects where your team's likely to finish in the league. Uh, you should check it out because it's quite interesting. Well, bound to say that. Um, I had thought about redoing it and I thought, well, actually, that video's got most information contained within it, so it's not a major thing to go from there. But I update the wage bill and all of this uh, financials for the clubs during the off-season to see what's going on. And the interesting thing is that the spend at Man City has tailed off a little bit. Um, so you look at the top three uh, in terms of how much money is being spent on wages and you end up with the same sort of Chelsea, Man United, Arsenal, Man City um, teams at the top of the league. But the interesting thing, and this should bring comfort and hope to Arsenal fans, is if you look at Arsenal's spend because their financial model is better than everybody else's at the top of the league as a proportion of that top four their proportion um, of the wage bill is rising and rising and rising and gradually catching uh, the rest if it continues like that within the next three years they will probably have one of the highest wage bills in the premier league but the interesting thing is it will be uh, financially viable so actually, while Arsenal and Wenger come in for a lot of criticism, if you look at the line on the graph, it's actually looking really positive. And it's growing in a nice steady fashion. If you look at Chelsea, Man City, Man United, the jump's going like that um, as they panic and, and buy in big players. So that was, that was interesting to see. Um, Liverpool are on a bit of an upward curve as well. And interestingly, Spurs were relatively flat. But the interesting thing is, uh, you can look at the absolute numbers, but what I tend to look at is the relative wage bills by club. And um, when you look at that, it basically gives you a much better measure of how clubs are competing with each other in terms of their wage bill. And it's getting pretty tight at the top. Um, if you look at those top four being Chelsea, Man United, um, Arsenal and Man City, um, you know, the proportions are fairly similar. And, um, the, you know, that, that's quite interesting in itself. I mean, last season was a, a bit of a shocker for all of them uh, on the basis that um, obviously Leicester did well. But my theory behind that is not that Leicester did well. It's just that they all did really badly. I mean, they made a complete cock up, uh, for want of a better word. Of, I mean, how, how many opportunities did you want to win the league and how many did you fail to take? So, you know, full credit to Leicester because they did it. But it was an appalling season from the other clubs. You should be shamed 
that you failed to take that opportunity. But one of the things I did this year was I spent uh, too much time, really, in all honesty, a fair amount of time looking at a team's relative performance just to see if there was some something I could leverage off of there to take a position over the course of the season or learn how that was going to play out. And uh, so I sorted all of the clients. It's too complicated to put on the uh, on the screen here. And I'll read out bits to you, which I know is slightly more boring, but you'll understand what's going on here. Um, but yeah, I was looking at the relative performance. So how much did clubs pay and where did they finish in the league? And then I ranked them from the biggest to the smallest. So if you go to the top of this pile and you look along this list, Stoke um, are consistently performing above the amount of money that they spend. So of clubs that have been in the Premier League for a reasonable length of time, Stoke have performed the best. Uh, going down a little bit here, um, you get to Southampton. Southampton are performing well above the amount of money that they're spending. They're getting more bang for their buck in terms of uh, what they would expect. Now, th this is somewhat relative because obviously if you spend a very small amount of money, but you do quite well for that, you could still be relegated. Um, but Bolton were another club that stood out that generally did quite well. But the amount of money they were spending was so small that they were always in that little zone towards the bottom of the league. So they did well relative to that, but obviously they got caught out one year and were relegated. Um, Everton have generally been just above where they would expect to be. So that's going to be fascinating this year to see if they throw around enormous amounts of money, if they get a result. My instinct is that then it's not going to happen. That's that's my instinct. Let's see what, what happens. You know, I'm, I'll be happy for Everton fans if I'm totally shamed on that. Uh, there's a load of teams in the middle that more or less get the same bang for the buck. And um, these are teams like, uh, let's have a look, um, Arsenal. Uh, they do slightly better uh, than the amount of money that they spend. But then you're looking at your Liverpools, your Chelsea's, your Man United's and so on. So the only reason they're consistently at the top of the league is because they consistently spend the most amount of money. That, that's all there is to it. Um, now, if you look towards the bottom, this is when it starts to get a little bit interesting because when we look at the bottom of the league, um, teams like Aston Villa pop up. So Aston Villa, if I look along this line here, have consistently been under performance. And of course, they were relegated last season. So I figured out that if you take the wage bill and then you add the amount of debt the club has to it, so that gives you a good indicator as to teams that are likely to run into trouble in the future. So I've been tipping Aston Villa to be in trouble for a few years and they finally went down last year. Um, Man City consistently underperformed, but again, you see, you've got to counter this with the fact that they're spending stupid amounts of money. Um, so their underperformance is relative to that position in the league. So they're spending pretty much the same or more than most teams in the league and therefore they'll underperform but only within that slight range. They're not going to get relegated because of that. They have to spend much less to get relegated. Uh, here's, here's an obvious one, Newcastle. Newcastle have been perennial underperformers. They're right near the bottom of this sheet and um, you know I don't think it needs me or any statistics to tell Newcastle fans that that's a problem. The good news is that should mean that they should be coming back to the Premier League fairly quickly. Sunderland, same situation. Interestingly, West Ham have suffered from this over the longer term, apart from the last two seasons. And now they're in a new stadium and have more revenue and probably a little bit more money. Um, that probably should correct that. But they are down the bottom here in terms of their overall performance. So the message I take from that is that if there are teams that are spending similar amounts of money, you can begin to spot teams that have some systemic structural problem um, through this data. And you look at those teams towards the bottom there, Sunderland, you know, it looks like that could be an issue. West Ham is an interesting one, not, not too sure about that. But um, nonetheless, that gives me an indicator as to clubs that will out or underperform. But like I said, it's relative. Uh, if you look at Manchester, uh, Man United rather, Last year, I don't have this year's accounts, but last year's accounts indicate that they spent 210 million on player wages, which is right at the top of the league. So even if they underperform, it will be relative to that, which means that they may finish fourth or fifth or something. Now, this season, obviously, they're probably spending much more than that. So um, as a consequence, that should elevate them even much higher. So if they don't win it this year, that would be an underperformance. Uh, if, it's interesting, actually, if you go back 30 years ago, um, as you do, 
Um, I've got detailed records from clubs over a large number of years and carefully researched it, but in 1985, I saw in an article the other day, Manchester United, 1985-86, Manchester United spent 2.6 million um, on player wages. And last year they spent 210 million. That's incredible. Hundredfold increase in 30 years. Um, but if you look at the amount of money that's being spent, 10 years ago, Premier League clubs uh, spent half a billion on player wages. And last year they spent 2 billion. Um, and there's no sign of that stopping at the moment. So anyway, start of the new season. Hope you've got realistic expectations for your team. Um, I'm looking forward to the season. It should be interesting. I would be surprised if Leicester a feature in the uh, race towards the end of the season. But then I said that at halfway point last season and everybody got that wrong. It's incredibly rare and unusual. I expect a return to normality this season. So anyway, best of luck with what's going on with your team and hope you have a good one. If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, its tools and the opportunities they present, then why not visit betangel.com today and download a free trial.